All right, so we'll put the airplane in an unusual attitude again, and then I'll give you the controls all of a sudden and see if you can save it. Hi there, and welcome back to another video from the Flight Academy. Today, we're going to discuss and demonstrate simulated instrument training using a view limiting device and that would also include unusual attitude recoveries. Simulated instrument training is a very important part of private pilot training. And you will be required to log at least three hours of simulated instrument training with a qualified flight instructor. As for an instrument training, you will need to log 40 hours of simulated instrument training, either with an instructor or with a qualified safety pilot. Now, the key with instrument training is that you'll be flying the aircraft with reference to the instruments only. We achieve this by using a view limiting device, which is generally either a visor that you wear on your head or foggles that are glasses that blur out most of your vision. So this way you can only see the instruments inside of the cockpit. Now let's take a look at a demonstration of a student doing instrument training with an instructor in our Cessna 172. But first, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future training videos. Alrighty, Max. So uh, we're over here with the practice area at 4,000 feet. You ready for some uh, simulated instrument training? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so let's start with exchanging flight controls. So we'll do that through three-way communication. So I have the controls. All right, you have the controls. My controls. All right. You can grab your foggles and put them on. Okay. Barely see anything with these. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> the whole point is to isolate all your external, uh, you know, clues, so you can only use the instruments over here uh, for navigation. So, um, as we spoke in the office and the briefing, um, you'll use the attitude indicator as your primary. And then from there, you can switch your eyes to the altimeter to look at your altitude. Now, if you want to look at your airspeed, your eyes have to move over to the attitude indicator first before moving to the airspeed indicator, just to make sure that everything's still as you want it to be. And then from there, if you want to take a look at the heading indicator, for example, your eyes switch over to the attitude indicator first before jumping over to the heading indicator, just to double check that everything is still, you know, as you want it to be. And you do that over and over again um, while controlling the airplane. Really? Anytime I look at a new instrument, I look at the heading indicator in between, right? That's or not exactly. the heading, the attitude indicator. The attitude indicator, exactly. Okay. All right. You ready to give it a shot? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, so I'll give the controls back to you. You have the controls. All right, I have the controls. Your controls. All right, so let's uh, maintain positive aircraft control for now. 4,000 feet, about 280 heading. Okay, 280, 4,000 feet. And then let's do a climbing right turn to 340 heading and up to 4,500 feet. Okay, 340 and up to 4,500 feet. Don't forget to go full power for the climb. There we go. And 80 knots is a good climb speed over here. Okay, there's 340, and we've got about 200 feet to go here. Perfect, looking good. Excellent, back to 4,500 feet, 340 heading. Let's do a descending uh, turn uh, down to 4,000 again, and left turn to about, uh, let's say 250. Okay, left turn to 250 and descend to 4000. Yep. Looking good. I see traffic over here, looks like a helicopter. Okay, you've got eyes on the traffic? Yep. All right.
Hey, there's 250, and I'll level off at 4,000. All right, let's get into uh, unusual attitude recoveries. Okay. And before we do that, let's head over to uh, over non-populated area, and let's keep climbing to 5,000 feet, give us a little bit more altitude. Okay. So maybe a heading of 360 and up to 5,000 feet. Okay, up to 5,000 feet and 360. Now the easiest way and the fastest way to recover from unusual attitudes is as soon as I give you the controls of the airplane, um, the first thing you have to put your eyes on is the airspeed indicator. Okay. That'll, be, that'll be the best indication uh, if you're in a nose high or nose low unusual attitude. All right. So if you have low airspeed, you'll be in a nose high attitude. And if you have high airspeed, you'll be in a nose low attitude. Now depending on that, you either go full power or power to idle. So if you know. If you have low airspeed, you go full power. If you have full airspeed, you go power idle. And then only after you do that, you look at the attitude indicator and you get the airplane, the nose of the airplane to straight and level, basically. Okay. As soon as you get back to straight and level and airspeed, uh, you know, stabilizes, you can add power back to about 2300, you know, which is our cruise power setting. Okay. And then uh, start flying again. Okay, so there's 360 and we've got a few hundred feet to go here. Alrighty. Okay, there's 5,000 feet. All right, perfect. So, again, I'll take the controls uh, in a second, and then um, I'll put the airplane in an unusual attitude and while you have your head down so you don't try to cheat and get you know, <laughs> some cues. And then as soon as I give you the controls, immediately grab on the yoke, grab the control of the throttle and the yoke, and then look at the airspeed, and then adjust the throttle, and then adjust the attitude. Okay. As simple as that. We're start with, with the some mellow ones, and then we'll gradually make it, a, you know, a little bit more difficult. All right. With each one, as you're feeling getting more comfortable. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So I have the controls. Okay. You have the controls. I have the controls. And then put your head down, close your eyes, and again we'll start with the mellow ones. So remember not to feel that you're rushed. You know, take your time. Grab the controls. Look at the airspeed indicators. Think about it. Adjust the throttle, and then take it from there. All right, you have the controls. I have the controls. Your okay, controls. power back. Idle. Okay, and now I'm going to roll out. Okay. There you go, easy as that. You could have been a little bit quicker on the rolling out. Okay. You know what, because you pull the power back and then you, you thought for about a couple of seconds before rolling right. out of the turn. So, right. yeah, as soon as you notice the airspeed is high, pull the power back and immediately start, you know, rolling out of that seat bank and Get it back to straight and level attitude, basically. Okay. I'll have the controls. Okay, your controls. My controls will turn to the right. Just stay away from that traffic. And we're so good airspace-wise. All right, you can put your head down, Max. Okay. And I have the controls. Close your eyes. We'll go into an unusual attitude this time. A little bit more, you know, more challenging than the, than the other one. All right, you have the controls. I have the controls. Okay, power to idle and roll out. Okay. Back to straight and level. Airspeed stabilizes. Add power again and back to cruise. Excellent. Okay. I have the controls again, Max. Okay, you have the controls. I have the controls. All right, so we'll put the airplane in an unusual attitude again, and then I'll give you the controls all of a sudden, and see if you can save it. Whee! <laughs> Your controls. My <laughs> controls. Okay. Uh, power to idle. Roll out. Okay. <laughs> and back to cruise bar setting. Excellent. All right. Remember to do it in sequence, right? Right. So power back. Power first. Then, yeah, then adjust the, uh, you can, you know, the ailerons and the uh, elevator, basically. Okay. To get back to cruise power setting. Okay. Cruise attitude. Now, why do we, why do we practice this? So, uh, it's very important to practice recovering from unusual attitudes in case you get spatially disoriented and you're flying IMC. Uh, you can take the foggles off, uh, Max. Okay. Get the controls. My controls. All right. Wow, I can see again. <laughs> <laughs> you missed all the beautiful views on a beautiful day, but you got some good instrument training and some simulated instrument time, and hopefully, I'll be able to save you one day. Absolutely. <laughs>
Now, do I need to do this with an instructor? Uh, the simulated instrument time. Um, if you're if you just uh, if you just want to build simulated instrument time for the purpose of uh, satisfying your requirements for the instrument rating, then you don't have to be with an instructor for that. You just have to be with a with a with a safety pilot. A safety pilot, okay. Uh, which any private pilot rated in the airplane can serve as. Okay. And so they are watching for traffic and terrain and all of that stuff, right? Exactly. While I'm yep. under the foggles. Yep, since you can't see outside, exactly. Okay. Yeah, so it's important to practice recovering from unusual attitudes. Um, in case, you know, God forbid, you get yourself in an in a actual IMC and then you get spatially disoriented and lose control of the airplane. You can always, you know, get back to the bread and butter of training, you know, simply um, unusual attitude recovery, just look at your airspeed, control control your throttle, and then uh, get back to straight and level attitude. Here are a few things to remember. Your instrument scan should always be on point, focusing on the attitude indicator as your primary instrument, and moving your eyes from the attitude indicator to the altimeter, back to the attitude, back to the airspeed, back to the attitude, back to your heading, back to the attitude, back to the altimeter, and so forth. So you're always looking at the attitude indicator before looking at other instruments. Your eyes should always glance at the attitude indicator before moving to another instrument. As for the unusual attitude recovery method, the best way to go about it is to look at your airspeed first and foremost. Depending on your airspeed, you will determine if you're in a nose high or nose low configuration. And according to that, you can then adjust your power setting by either going full power if you're in a nose high attitude or reducing the power to idle if you're in a nose low attitude and then get back to straight and level by looking at the attitude indicator. After you get back to straight and level, adjust your power accordingly back to cruise power setting. All right, don't forget to thumbs up this video if you find it helpful and we'll see you next time.